Hey guys, welcome to the channel. So today uh, I was kind of wanted to show off actually one of the first videos I shot. So, you know, over the past month, I've been kind of getting everything set up um, before I started publishing videos just to get things to the quality standards and kind of figure out, you know, what the F I'm doing. But this, this is something actually one of the first unboxings I recorded. So I found it, I thought it was fun and silly. Uh, it's a very important iconic piece in the Lego history. It's still sought after by collectors to this day uh, and it's from sweden so uh i got a new haircut i got some old footage so let's flick some bricks so ever since i started back on the construction of the tower in may i've continually surprised myself at my ignorance of the complexity of building a large-scale mega mock one thing that I've been particularly surprised by is how much room it takes these little little Lego elements can fill in one's home. Most Aples will dedicate uh, at least a room, some people their basements, and in the case of many master builders, their entire houses fill up with these Lego building elements. Personally, I chose to go with my ottoman. And to help facilitate this was something I built actually back in 2018. The Uber tray. So I got the idea for this one after doing some kitchen remodeling and having this giant box that my brand new kitchen sink came in. So I took cardboard and then cut out uh, some divider areas. Uh, each of the cardboard dividers was hot glued and then taped into place. It isn't the prettiest, but it did a very effective job of letting any of the small pieces shift between the dividers. On the right hand side, I took some of the foam and uh, these old kitchen bowls I had, which are fairly low profile, and then I carved out the interior. And then this allows um, the whole tray to slip directly underneath my ottoman. Even has a nice little cell phone holder area. I really enjoyed using this for sets, but when I brought it back this year, it did not work as well as I remember. It was awful. Like I had these just stacks of these like sort of leftover lunch containers I was using. And I had to like hunch over the the edge of the the ottoman to get at them. I get these like wicked back pain. And I was doing this for a few weeks. And I guess, I don't know. I guess I just love the little organizing tray I put so much time into. I didn't realize that this was not sustainable, but a slight nudge from a friend made me come to my senses. So I moved to the kitchen table. Wow, what a difference a table makes. A chair, more chairs. It was awesome. But this one didn't really last that long because again, my kitchen table, which led to my penultimate setup. This was of course, door desk 2.0. This was literally a $5 door I got from the Habitat for Humanity Restore, which is a great place to pick up any sort of thrift or DIY items. But you know, I got the door, I rounded down the edges, I stained it. I think it turned out pretty well. Uh, I slapped it on a couple of filing cabinets and that was my desk for, for I don't know, two years um, until I finally upgraded and got a, a real desk this was okay as a build area. Um, I guess I have low standard in build areas, like thinking through this now, but the main issue I had with this was one, that the storage bins would get everywhere. So every time I got down to work, I'd have to sort of schlep things from the bookshelf that was behind me to there. And literally I had my working area and then every other area surrounded by just containers and bins of Lego. You know, even though I had no room and the, the storage was getting a nightmare and the area between my kitchen and family room was now like physically blocked off. I guess in hindsight, it wasn't that great, but you know, I would have stuck there until I had the wild idea to start filming the construction of the mock for you find people. Like all Lego channels, I needed a way to do a overhead. It's now really easy for me to do that. But originally it wasn't so straightforward for me. I had to use the tripods and prop them up on the desk to get these weird angles. And the first piece of video equipment I got actually was in fact this same jib arm. Hey jib arm, say hi. And then I prop this DSLR, which is the only camera I owned. And I love this camera. It has this wicked lens here, takes pictures. It's pretty sweet. 
terrible for terrible for uh video so autofocus is a thing the nikons are both bad at autofocus and loud at autofocus the the setup was not ideal but it, it did get i was able to capture on this camera the following footage that you're about to see hello everybody welcome to the uh prototype episode decided maybe for the international purchases i try to get domestic uh, shipments from bricklink but this is actually from the great land the neutral land of switzerland um so we're gonna see what i order here so let's check it out all right dump it all out here Crinkling. I'm told that the crinkling is of course. Ooh, look at this. Okay. All right. So, uh, I don't know what this is necessarily. Uh, let's see if they have. Sometimes they include an invoice. This one does not. Um, there's some 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 word of vehicle base. Maybe for like a. I'm thinking this is probably like an airship helipad deal, something, something like that. I have no particular use for this, or well, use is use is an interesting word. I don't have any uh, predetermined use for this. Every 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 brick has a purpose in the hands of the right builder. Now, but these are the these. This is where this is where the action happens. So this is a monorail base. So the monorail system was discontinued um, quite some time ago, but what is nice about the monorail is it is able to start and stop itself um, through transfer switches, unlike the other train systems. So it is highly sought after. Um, this is a short piece I am still waiting for the elusive long straight, which run about thirty dollars US piece. I, think. I have no idea what this stuff costs. Um, if I was more prepared, I would have had the um, had that set up. All right, so let me actually try to. So these are the, the bogies. Let me <laughs> just knock stuff over. I can I can edit this, right? Surely I'll edit this. Surely this. This won't be the final cut, you see. Surely not. So this I already have in my collection. But, um, never actually been able to attach these. So another great thing about buying all these parts used is they don't come with any sort of directions on how they're supposed to work, I think. But this that thing. Like so, hey, and then, ah, look at that. And then I guess this guy, oh, like that. Okay, okay. I'm questioning whether I, I normally wash all the used bricks. But these are so elusive, so rare. I don't know if I should. Put in the comments whether you think I should throw these incredibly expensive, super rare antique pieces of plastic in my washing machine without regard for its safety. I don't know if you think that's a good idea or not. All right. Here we go. Is that going to work? Eh, kind of. So there's a um. So these. So the idea is, or so I'm told, that as this goes past, see there's see these things on the side right here, will get activated as it goes past the transportation, or it won't, or, or that, or that doesn't happen at all. We're all, we're learning together. We're all learning together. There's no, uh, there probably is actually, but 
I haven't found, nor would I make myself available, a monorail instruction guide. I am going to figure this out myself. So I think this, see, I twist it. See, see look, twisting is involved. Ah. All right, let's pretend that all worked flawlessly. <laughs> but there you go. This is the monorail. So the monorail will, um, unless I chicken out, will be uh, sort of spun freestanding um, around the perimeter of the above. But uh, during but a uh, portion of the monorail was actually damaged in the explosion. So the monorail does not make the complete uh, loop of the circle, which again is why these uh, switch plates are so important, because otherwise the idea is that this will be free hanging in midair and the laws of gravity still apply to Legos. So this would just fly directly to the ground. And that's not, that's not great because as I mentioned, um, monorail plastic is incredibly expensive and highly valued by the community and nobody would be happy if I broke a bunch of so. All right, that was uh, from her, Andreas. Appreciate your transaction and uh, I'll catch you next time. All right, guys, I hope you liked that one. Um, that was fun to make. It was fun to rewatch it. It's silly. We're, the monorail is so end game. So don't even worry about the monorail. Although I do want to say I have gotten more monorail straight pieces from various Eastern European countries that kind of appear periodically. And of course we will actually be building a tower. I know I've just been doing unboxing and other silly things trying to get set up here. Uh, the next video will go a long way into correcting that. Um, so get subscribed click the like button, hit the bell, have yourself a nice day. And again, if you're ever wondering like, when is he gonna build something with Lego? What's going on in this channel? We'll get there and we'll get there one brick at a time.